Week one is in the books, and that means we are back with five moves to make heading into week two of the fantasy season. Now, weird stuff happened in week one. It always does. There's a, a plenty of things we did not anticipate. There are injuries. There were a ton of low-scoring games, but that does not mean we don't have a ton for you to do in Dynasty. So let's get into it. The first move to make is go out and add whichever Rams wide receiver is available, right? Obviously, the ideal addition is Puka but he's probably not available in most leagues. Instead, turn your attention to Tutu Atwell. He's available in over 50% of leagues as of this recording. He put up 119 yards with a 21% target share and a 29% air yard share. So he's not really just working around the line of scrimmage. They are actively using him well beyond the line of scrimmage. They are giving him deep balls. They are giving him every opportunity to actually earn a meaningful role in this offense. And he did it in week one. And I understand, right, that the Seahawks are not good. Like that defense is not good. It is very banged up, very injured. But still, you need to see these types of things, even in matchups that are supposed to be easy, right? It looks as if the demise of Matthew Stafford was greatly, greatly over-exaggerated. He is very much alive and well. He is very much capable of supporting very fantasy-relevant weapons. So moving forward, at least with Cooper Cup being out, Tutu Atwell enters wide receiver three territory, or at least the potential to be a top 36, top 30 wide receiver. And like I said at the top here, right, Puka is the guy you want. He's probably not available, so turn your attention to Tutu Atwell. The second move you need to make is go out and add Justice Hill on the back of the J.K. Dobbins Achilles injury. Now, before we talk about Justice Hill, J.K. Dobbins, that, that injury just hurts. Like, obviously, we're a J.K. Dobbins you know, fans, we like him on this channel, but an Achilles injury at his age with his injury history, he's likely done. Like, I'm not going to ever tell you to go out and buy low on J.K. Dobbins, at least for the next like year and a half. If I can move him for basically anything, I'm doing that. But the more important move here now is going out and adding Justice Hill, who's available in 79 percent of leagues right now. And that is going to skyrocket. He had eight carries for only nine yards, which not ideal, but he is at least look to be the preferred back in the red zone. So Justice Hill looks to be the guy to own here. And if you want to go even a step deeper, Melvin Gordon is getting activated off the practice squad. Now, they could opt to sign Kareem Hunt or sign Leonard Fournette. But for now, it looks as if the trio will be Justice Hill, Gus Edwards, Melvin Gordon in that order. And week to week, this could change. Week to week, this may vary drastically. We don't know entirely what this is going to look like. But just based off of usage in week one, Justice Hill is the guy to own for me right now. Now, sticking at the running back position, move number three, go out and add Joshua Kelly. And I can't even believe I'm saying this. I can't believe we're doing this again. Now, this is not because Austin Eckler got hurt. This is because Joshua Kelly was basically a part-time or a part-time starter in week one. He played a ton. He got a ton of work. None of it was garbage time. It was in a close game, competitive game the entire day. And he gets 17 touches, 16 carries and a reception. He was highly efficient and he mixed in with Austin Eckler regularly. He is going to be a key part of this offense and it's going to score a ton. Right? This offense is going to be spectacular. They looked great. They were able to just run relentlessly. And that was not something we've seen them really be able to do over the last couple of years. And it looks as if Kellen Moore has come in, made it a point to run the ball, especially when they're able to. So that is going to be big moving forward. Joshua Kelly is a weekly flex. He, he's in that spot. He's not going to be an RB2, but it's also worth noting, should Austin Eckler go down, Joshua Kelly is going to be the guy. He is going to get a ton of work. He becomes an elite handcuff with some, again, some flex appeal here. And available right now in 43% of leagues, that is going to skyrocket. He needs to be rostered in 100% of your dynasty leagues moving forward. Before we get to move number three, if you guys want additional moves every single week, you're gonna get two extra moves on this video if you join the DLF YouTube membership right now. That is going to be every single week. You're gonna get an extended version of this video with even more insight every single week, along with a ton of other you know, unique content specific to our YouTube members. So check that out, guys. The DLF YouTube membership underneath that bonus content here is what you want. All right, let's get back into it. Now, getting away from just the waiver wire additions, we're going to talk about some other things. Move number four, go out and kick the tires on an Elijah Moore trade. Now, I know what you're thinking, right? He only puts up nine points, basically 9.2 in fantasy and 
Why are we excited? Why are we doing this with Elijah Moore again? It's the underlying numbers that I'm excited about, right? He has a very clearly defined role. He has a 56% slot rate, so he is the slot receiver. And with Deshaun Watson under center, as he continues to get back into form, I like that role for his pass catchers. Beyond that, though, he ties the lead in targets on the team with a 24% target share in week one. And then he puts up a 21% air yard share. So he's not getting used down the field. He's not really getting used deep but he's in a role that is going to earn a lot of targets, right? This is what we wanted for him when he was in New York last year. We basically said, why the hell is he not seeing the ball? He's a guy that should be able to earn a 20 to 25% target share. He goes out and does it week one. Now, that game is in the rain. It's ugly. It is a division matchup. It's not really like a conducive to a lot of points, but the underlying numbers for Elijah Moore are solid. So that is why I'm going out. I'm going to kick the tires on him because I think there's more to come. This offense is going to improve. It's going to get better. And Elijah Moore should come along with that. In terms of value, not giving up a first. Do not give up a first for Elijah Moore right now. That takes away the point of buying low, right? So instead, go throw a second and a third, two seconds. See if you can get somebody who just thinks, you know, I've seen the show. I've done, I've done this with Elijah Moore. I'm out. That's fine. Go and try to buy semi-cheap for a guy that I think has significantly higher upside the rest of the season. Move number five, bench DeAndre Swift moving forward. You can't trade him. You can't start him. He has to sit on your bench. And the reason is he has a 28% snap share. He has one carry. He has two targets. It was just an abysmal day if you roster DeAndre Swift or thought this is going to be his backfield. It is not. It is Kenny Gainwell's backfield. And DeAndre Swift just looks to be a backup running back or a part-time player. And it sucks. It sucks so much. Because I think he's good. I think DeAndre Swift is talented. But now, again, it's only one week, so I don't want to you know, lose our minds. But now we have two, co three coaching staffs that have just not fully utilized him to the way a lot of us think he should be. At some point, we got to say, okay, we're wrong on DeAndre Swift, most likely. I'm not 100% there but I'm real damn close. And in other words, you just can't do anything with him. You can't play him for fantasy. And this could change week to week. For all we know, Kenny Gainwell didn't do enough and Nick Sirianni goes to DeAndre Swift next week. But now I have to see that happen. I need to see them feature DeAndre Swift in the run game, in the pass game. And until that happens, he is living at the bottom of my bench. He cannot come anywhere near your starting lineup. And that sucks because a lot of people have treated him, myself included, as an RB2. He was drafted to be an RB2 in fantasy, and in Dynasty, he has been banked on to be an RB2. All right, guys, that is all we have for you. Again, if you like what we are doing here, if you want to see more of these videos, more of just content in general on this channel, sub one, subscribe. Two, check out the DLF YouTube memberships. As always, guys, thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.